In last week's episode, we paddled the final stretch of the Catawagami River and made it to the Kesagami River. We took all the food out of our bear barrel to fill it with water in preparation for traveling along the coast. We came across some more wildlife and also got hit with some cold and rainy weather. Water levels were low, making travel slow, but we managed to push through. Welcome to this week's episode. Hey, happy day 13. Happy day 13, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's day 13. It's a frosty morning this morning. Eric, what are you wearing for layers right now? Got my rain jacket. Got my dry top. Got a sweater. Got my long johns. I don't think that showed the long yeah, johns. Yeah. Long johns, nice. Right, long johns. We are currently hustling to get everything all packed up so we can get on the water while the tide's still going out. Uh, so we should be able to get a couple of hours of paddling in um, before the tide starts coming back in again. And uh, yeah, we're skipping breakfast this morning and we're gonna have it, hopefully, at the mouth of James Bay. Coffee on the coast, a roast on the coast. A roast on the coast. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the sun is trying to poke through for us this morning. We got some holes with some blue skies. And the wind's really low right now, so it could shape up to be a really good day for us to make some distance. confluence of the Karakana and shortly after that we'll be on the mouth of James Bay. So just as we're reaching the mouth of the Karakana, it also looks like it opens up huge into what we believe to be James Bay. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Everybody, we're at the confluence, the Harakana, and the Kesagami. And straight behind me, that's James Bay, baby. <laughs> we made it. Probably about nine in the morning at this point. Low tide. 
and I think we're two pretty happy campers. We did it. We might need to have a roast by the coast. Roast by the coast. I think it's that time. Fire up a coffee. Oh yeah. So this is the biggest of the three rivers that we are going to be paddling very, very briefly. Um, we're only on the Harakana for literally like a couple kilometers, maybe not even, before it spews into the mouth of James Bay. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty lucky with some sun, a little bit of sun today, and uh, the wind's not overly strong. Yo, you can really see the sand out there, eh? Yeah. Alrighty, getting some signs of the sandbars. And that water, you can kind of see some shallow, sandy sections. We're at low tide right now, so it should be interesting to see as the tide comes up. Our paddling time today is sometime around 2 o'clock. We have to check our charts again. Um, so... We might be able to start a little early, but we're gonna have to see when uh, the tide gets high enough for us to paddle where we're not like five kilometers offshore, where we can probably do it maybe like a kilometer or two at the most offshore. So it should be, it's gonna be interesting. Definitely some new challenges on this section of the trip. When the tide goes out on James Bay, the sand flats that are close to shore are exposed, requiring us to paddle up to five kilometers offshore. If we wait for the tides to come in, we're able to paddle much closer to shore, which is a safer way to travel. The mud is uh, sticking to our feet and is incredibly slippery. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing that neither one of us have absolutely completely wiped out yet. Yeah yet. Stay tuned. And this morning, we are having our favorite breakfast. Little oatmeal, nope, granola with milk. Featuring a little roast on the coast. Just want to make sure you're, uh, you're enjoying your roast on the coast. Good to the last drop. Nice. Maxwell House. Wow. That's it. And your roast. On the coast. Is that all, sir? <laughs> That'll be all. Thank <laughs> you very much. It's so slippery out there. <laughs> yeah. I wonder where we're gonna camp tonight. I know the bay decides now. Yeah. The bay decides where we camp. The tide will go out. We'll hike in and we'll be like, all right, well, this is what we get. That hike in is going to be dangerous yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> Shiny not bare barrel. <laughs> I'm going to sink, bro. We're going to have to roll the bear barrel. Three, two, one. <laughs> Don't lose control. Dude, that's what I was saying, that we were pulling it up, and then it was sliding down. Yee! Oh, my God. oh, bro, it's deeper. <laughs> Yo, you're trying, trying, with your right leg, try and get all that shit off. I am, yeah. You want it up more? No, 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 it's good. 
Oh, it's still all over my shoes. I'm sliding in the canoe. Yo, it's a bit of a wide stretch, eh? <laughs> Jeez. I thought my uh, my dry pants were going to pop. <laughs> yeah, this is actually beautiful over here. Yeah. We're still not technically out there yet, but I already like what I see. We couldn't have asked for a better day to reach James Bay. We're just at the mouth of Hannah Bay right now. It's beautiful out here. A lot of interesting birds that we've seen so far. A lot of Canadian geese. Some seagulls. See some little birds roaming around there. Whole flock of them there. These sand flats, it's like a whole other world that we're on. So we pulled our canoe up on the sand flats right at the corner. And uh, there's actually a current going through, obviously all the water draining out of the sand flats created like a bit of a ditch. But one of the very first things we see when we arrived here was these big old paw prints. Looks like about four steps is equivalent to about ten of ours. So whatever this is, it's massive. We're just hoping it's a black bear and not the polar bear. All right, so at some time within the next couple hours, the tide is gonna come back in and all of this ground behind me, this muddy, sand flats are going to be covered with water and we'll actually be able to paddle along the coast. We're kind of thinking that uh, based on seeing those uh, paw prints we kind of want to get out a little bit and prepare to be able to cross sooner so that we can like really maximize the amount of distance we cover today. Um, so we're going to keep paddling out along the shore a little further and just see where we come to. Uh, from some of the research that we've done, we know that other people when they've crossed here have paddled a couple kilometers out from shore and we're probably only about 100 meters offshore right now, so we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated as we go further out. Um, yeah, I think we're both definitely wishing that we didn't see those paw prints so early into us arriving at James Bay. It's uh, just a little unsettling. The moment we saw these tracks, our nightmares were coming to life. Mix that in with the deep mud, and we were feeling the most scared and the most vulnerable we had ever felt in our entire lives. How you feeling, man? Well, paddling out here, I honestly thought that this is a lot more beautiful than I initially expected it to be. We got offshore, and I instantly, all of that instantly regressed into just fear. I know there's a very small chance that that's a polar bear track, but if that's a polar bear track, I'm not into it. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So I think uh, I think our best bet is to, for some reason I feel safer in the canoe. I don't even know if that's like a justified feeling, but I think we should get out and leave. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, definitely unsettled right now. Coming into this trip, we did some research and, you know, some of the people that you talk to say that there's no chance that you'd see a polar bear up here, you'll be fine. And then there's a select few that say, yeah, there's the odd one roaming around or whatever. So it's just, uh, I mean, obviously we were banking for not seeing any and 
Um, I think also just because we didn't bring a gun with us, which a lot of people would bring a gun um, to a trip along James Bay or in, anywhere in the Hudson's Bay Lowlands. But I don't know. We're trying to stay positive and uh, I think paddling a little further and uh, maybe seeing a little bit more of the beauty of this place will help calm us down a little bit because it really is beautiful out here. Has the water come up a bit already? Yeah, it has. The tide is coming in. Holy, holy smokes, man. Man, I had to do up my shoes so tight. Yeah, I'm planning on doing them extremely tight in the boat. And the other thing is that like, if that is something that we're worried about, like we really, like, Dude, we're knee deep in mud. Yeah. Like even to defend, like, like, yo, if something came out right here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm smoked. <laughs> you're like literally a shish kebab stick. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm a like. You're yeah. skewered. Dude, I'm like I'm smoked. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a piece of spaduch, bro. Yeah. You know. Getting spaduched was definitely something that we didn't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> didn't go into our planning, dude. Did not go into our planning. But you know what did? Having fun, so let's try and do it. Yeah, let's do it. We tried to continue to paddle, but our nerves were at an all-time high. Are you wanting to look at that? That? Yeah. Looking at the white and black thing way out there. It kind of looks like a seagull on the log. That's probably what it is. <laughs> it's legitimately a seagull on a rock. Yo, is it trippy when you look through these and like a goose looks like it's 10 feet tall? We definitely both had a pretty unsettling feeling when we saw the size of those prints, like literally four of its steps, which is like the length of its body, was like 10 of ours. So this thing is absolutely massive, whatever it is, whether it's a black bear who may have no interest in us, or whether it's a polar bear that happened to be making his way really far south, which I don't even know if that's truly possible, but we know that there has been polar bear sightings in this area. We don't know if there's been any this year, but um, yeah, it definitely has us both like on edge and kind of thinking that it might not be worth it to paddle across and risk it if uh, if a boat if there's a boat ride that's an option still. So we're reaching out and feeling out our options right now. We've been slowly paddling across the flats to see if we can get closer, um, but. Uh, it's kind of dried up behind us here, so we kind of have to wait for uh, high tide to come in. We're currently in the middle of low and high tide, so over the next little while anyways, this water should all uh, filter in and we should be able to paddle a lot easier, but right now we're still kind of at a bit of a standstill, so just feel it out. Um, yeah, it, it feels like we are on a completely different planet out here, like it is crazy. Like we can't see land pretty much in any direction right now. So I don't know how clear we made this uh, earlier, but um, essentially those tracks that we saw were in an area that is normally covered by water in high tide. And so the fact that we saw those tracks means that whatever that was that passed through, whatever that massive animal was, it passed through within the last probably six hours, call it, um, sometime between the high tides. So just a little freaky to be thinking about the fact that something that big could be roaming that close to you and not knowing what it was with the chance of it being a polar bear.
There's absolutely like no sounds right now other than the odd bird. Pretty amazing out here. Special place for sure. So we're currently using the Garmin inReach to reach out to our contact who is potentially able to pick us up by boat um, to see if a boat ride across the bay is still possible today or even tomorrow or something. How you feeling? A little unnerved right now. Uh, like I, I to speak on the beauty of this landscape, like it's something like I've never ever seen, never even imagined seeing it. Like you read so much about it. We've done so much research over the last, you know, month or two months kind of thing on this. And it really doesn't prepare you. Like it's so beautiful. Um, on the other hand, like just seeing those prints and knowing that, you know, something might be around the corner that we really don't want to see. And in a very vulnerable state, like we can't really move out here, especially in tide, like low tide like this. Uh, it's definitely something that's kind of freaking me out a little well actually a lot like i'm really scared <laughs> <laughs> me too man but i'm uh, like literally laughing out of fear yeah the uh I, I think alex and i have talked about this it's more so like you know being an outdoorsman you ha always have to be taking calculated risks um when when out here you are obviously taking a risk um at all times but it's more so you know reaching that acceptable level of risk and like Right now, I think both of us are on the same page where it's like, listen, we did the, the trip that we wanted to do. We would have really liked to do this, but um, like, I, I want to go, <laughs> I want to go on another trip, you know? And we knew that this might happen. We knew we weren't carrying a gun with us. We knew we only took one boat and we know it's only two of us, which means we are more vulnerable than most. If we were in maybe a group of like three or four boats, it might not be that worrisome, but like just where we are right now, God forbid anything happens. I think right now we're, we're both kind of like not in a good place to deal with that. Um, right on cue. Right on cue. So that's how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, no, I feel that, man. We got it. We got a ride. That's amazing. Okay, if you wait there, it would be much easier getting ready to head out. It may take up to three hours. You'll be brought back right away. So it sounds like there might be some legitimate concern to be out here. Yeah. That's from our contact back in uh, Moosini. So we did tell our contact back in Moosini for the boat ride that we saw some massive prints and we were concerned what it might be and they weren't even, I don't know, she wasn't hesitating at all to send out a boat for us, so makes us realize there might be some reason to be concerned right now. Uh, yeah, so sounds like a boat is still potentially like three hours out from arriving, which is pretty crazy, but uh, you know, that's better than the next five days out here along the coast or three to five days anyways that uh, you know we kind of have to just stand here with our, our hands tied so yeah I, I think it's definitely a tough pill to swallow like it's it is definitely like we we both really wanted to paddle across this bay and it's and it's a tough thing to accept but I think when both of us saw those prints it just like definitely and we talked about this we knew there was a chance we knew that there is a very slim chance, but we knew that there was a chance that there could be something out here. And again, that could literally be a black bear. And that's the part that's killing us is like, you know, are we just like backing off of this? One when, thing to note, when we started this video, right to the left of us was all sand. Look at right now. Oh man, that just came in so hot. Oh yeah, the tides are coming in huge. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Meet me with a
there is no good way to explain the feeling that we had out here. After seeing the prints and knowing that there was nothing else out here, we couldn't help but feel like prey. We constantly scanned the horizon looking at boulders with polar bear-like characteristics, leaving us with an unsettling feeling. Literally just five minutes ago, this was all sand. And now high tide is starting to come in. We're not actually even close to actual high tide yet. Shoreline is about two kilometers that way. You can see it way in the distance. Um, so eventually we should technically be able to paddle right up to it. So we still have a little bit more water to come in for us to do that. So I'm not underwater right now. The tide in is about, coming in very quickly right in now. In 30 seconds, I'm going to be underwater. Look. See, it's filling my step. Look at this. It's touching my shoe. This is insane. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, tides are awesome. Look, now my other hit my other shoe. I was completely on dry land before this. Wild, eh? Yeah, like. Yeah, you can see all of our footprints still, like under. Yeah. The surface, like where we got out. Eric's been still pulling up the canoe every couple of seconds. This thing's gonna be underwater in like two minutes. Crazy. All right, so we just got confirmation that uh, they're sending out a boat for us from Moosonee. It's gonna be probably about three hours before the boat gets here, so um, we're just gonna meet them at the mouth of the Kesagami. So we've already paddled quite a few kilometers away from that. So uh, we're gonna slowly make our way back now. Should be easier because the tide is still uh, rising, so uh, we should have the flow with us um, and uh, shouldn't be bouncing off the bottom too much. Uh, yeah, kind of some weird feelings right now, just with us not anticipating today being the last day of the trip and expecting to be paddling across a beautiful coast. And I mean, I think this was this place was way more beautiful than either of us expected. But at the same time, there's also definitely an eerie vibe, and that's amplified when you see massive tracks like we saw. And uh, yeah, I think at that point we were really thankful that we had made all these contacts and these plans in the event that we wanted to do something like this anyways. So um, yeah, kind of sucks calling it short, but I have no doubt we'll be back to paddle the bay at some point, but I don't think I'd want to be out here uh, with only two of us without a gun or maybe with some more people or something. but. It's definitely more beautiful than we anticipated and uh, yeah, kind of sad to be saying goodbye to it. All the wind has completely died down on the bay right now. It's making it very difficult for us to accept the fact that we just called for a boat and we had literally perfect paddling conditions for this uh, stretch of the trip, at least for some of it anyways. I mean, we might have still only been able to get about 15 20 kilometers under our belt today and we don't really know what the weather would have been tomorrow but it's it's almost like as soon as we got the confirmation that like that you know we we're gonna get out of here yeah everything just seemed to calm down like emotionally and like fit like the weather like everything yeah it's so crazy i kind of feel better about our decision now yeah but that was like a hundred percent a tough pill to swallow to accept not continuing on but in the moment i agree with you like i, I feel like i a fear set over me that I've never felt before. Yeah, like I'm not, I've definitely never been that scared in my life. Yeah, I, I feel like 
I feel like we had a lot of scary moments on this trip in terms of like dangerous things that we were doing and risky things that we were doing. And we, we got through all of that. And then to have like this, the thing is, this is just like fear of. Yeah, that's, you know, that's the issue, right? It's not like we're, it's not like the waterfall incident where it's like, there's a waterfall ahead of us and this is what we have to do to like evade the waterfall or like it's not like we can or it's not or it's see. not the polar bear yeah we can't it's not see. like we literally saw the polar bear and we're yeah. like yo absolutely like we both already said that yeah like <laughs> i feel like now i'm kind of like now that we're getting picked up and i feel safer i feel like i'm coming off of that fear and it's kind of like really like this is how we ended it yeah but in that moment I didn't even want to be on that land anymore. Like, I was just yeah. like, let's move away from here. Yeah. Pretty low. That's... But, man, Actually, but I... man, like, I've had some of the best days out here. Yeah. Some of the best days. Like, yeah. Frick. So many amazing views. So many, like, amazing experiences where it's just like we pushed our bodies to the absolute limits and then came out on top and, like, sat around a fire at night staring up at the stars you know falling asleep next to fires yeah because we were staring at the stars or like playing guitar in the evening and like yeah, just right. waking up the next day and doing it all over again and like every day was its own unique challenge but every day was like an amazing experience in its own way man i, I feel like i like a few times and every single day we kind of like just like f like looked up and like just started laughing at like what the hell was going on. Like yeah. we we're like, yo, this is crazy. Like we are pushing our bodies right now. We're portaging yeah. like crazy. But like we're looking around, it's just like how beautiful is yeah. this? It's, and it's incredible that like it's if this was in South like I said, if this was in southern Ontario, there'd be like a trail going all along it. There'd be like yeah. there'd be like tr like names, you know, there'd be like a perfect vista point at every single lookout, you yeah. know, possible. But very few people ever get to experience that. Yeah. It's so, it's really crazy. Yo, maybe tonight we'll see the Northern Lights, man. Maybe. I hope so. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Is that all done? Nope. No. I think it's, I think it's actually far from it. Nice. tracks right at the mouth here yeah they were pretty big and like you don't have a gun it's just close to us right so, so yeah um, like how big were these sacks can you show me like on the ground like yeah. Oh, yeah on the ground they're so, so first of all they ha like they happened but, like it was on the sand that would have normally been covered by water yeah, yeah. so it means that they were just fresh. by they're fresh mm -hmm, yeah and like the paws were probably about this big wow that's oh, a polar bear that's a polar bear yeah and uh like four Four of its steps, like one, two, three, four, was ten of ours. Wow. Oh. There's, so there's polar bears around here, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you thought it, you think it's a good a good thing that we called you guys? Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes us feel a lot better about ending the trip then. Smart decision. What yeah. are your guys' names? Hi, Emmett. Hi. This is Anne. Emmett and Anne. Yeah. Emmett and Anne. Yeah. Yeah. Eric. Alex. Oh, okay. Thanks a lot, guys. Sorry? Alright. Nice. No, no, good. Okay. Yeah? This spring, someone saw a polar bear? Yeah. 
tracks. Tracks, yeah. And the best the way to tell is how the, how big the tracks are. Um, it was it wasn't that big of a polar bear that one. So how can you tell the polar bear tracks apart from uh, black, black bear tracks? Heavier. Yeah. Yeah, bigger. Black bear is not that big. Huh? They're not that big around here. Yeah, the, like these tracks were like actually this big. Ending the trip early was a tough thing for us to accept, and we had mixed emotions about it. The three-hour boat ride back to Moose Factory gave us a lot of time to reflect, but we knew we had made the right decision. We ended up having an amazing ride back across the bay with a beautiful sunset. Because we ended our trip early, our train was still four days away, meaning we had four extra days to explore Moose Factory. With no real plan, we had no idea what to expect, but we were excited about the opportunity that we might not have otherwise had. Oh my god. Here, I built this fire pit. I put the logs around. You broke this? Yeah. Sure, this is going to be a massive fire. Yeah, we're going to put the fire on here. We're going to have chicks going across, we're going to have When is this going to be happening? I don't know yet. We're still in the process of finishing it. Right, this within, the next, used to, within the next few days or no? No. Oh. <laughs> this used to be on the ground. Okay, the fire pit to be loose. So you kind of raised it up? We, she wanted to raise it up. Yeah. So, so how did. hot does it get in here? Hmm? How oh, hot? It gets very hot. So so you, you hang all the like the animals? Yeah, the geese. The geese. We, usually it's for geese. Okay. And we have a um, metal stands over there. Yep. Yep. We put them over the fire. We fry a fire, make a bannock or fry a fish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. How long, you know, would, like how long would the uh, geese? Four hours. Four hours? Yeah. And then everyone's just around here having yeah. fun? Yeah. We cooked we cook turkeys here one day. Yeah? I think it was five turkeys we had hanging here. Wow. Oh my god. We had to, we had to tie them really good or they just fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. So tender. Gets yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. Yeah. So is this for smoking meat? Smoking beef. What are we gonna do? There's a barbecue near right now. Oh my God. Hey, this is for for the elders. Yeah. So this is a fire pit. Here they have string behind their geese. Twirl them around like a rotisserie. A rotisserie. Yeah. And it just goes. You just keep turning them around. You just keep turning and turning. 
keep your fire going 24 hours. So would you be doing this in the winter time as well? Mm, I never seen it. I did it once in the winter. But mostly in the summer. I would imagine this would get pretty, like it's hot right it now. Gets it's hot in here, yeah. Yeah. With all the seating, is it normal to, for everyone to hang out in here while this is happening? Yeah, people usually sit around and talk. Wow. Even though no matter how hot it gets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Might have to shed a layer. Yeah. By the end of it, everyone yeah. has their top off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's okay in here now. It's not. Wow. It's kind of growing into. Yeah, I thought this one is solution. Yeah. But it wasn't the right solution, so it's. I, I didn't. Apparently, it didn't boil long enough, so it's not. Uh, that's a it's not like stretched out enough? What's that? It's, no, this is caribou hide. Caribou? Oh, caribou? Okay. Yeah, this is caribou. So, at so the first stage is that you got to take all the meat off. Yeah. Then you go to the other side and you take all the hair off and the membrane underneath the hair. Okay. And then you got to do it really delicate so you don't get cuts like this in it. Because yep. that shows with the hide. Oh, you, so after yeah. the process is complete, you still see that? Yeah. And then you do the winter scrape. Like you take them in the winter and you scrape the kind of the top scrape. layer off? Yeah, and make it all even. Okay. It comes off like wood chips. Oh yeah? yeah? Really? Yeah. Wow. So okay, so do you tie like I'm assuming then I, you tie one end and you're kind of just like peeling it off? No, no, no. With these ones here, we do it like we'll take this and we'll put it over top of here. Okay? And yeah. you have it like this and you have your bib on. So then what you would do is you would hold it against here yeah and just go oh into i see motion but these things here they have the tubes on it eh yeah so it's a softer you're yeah. not chipping it yeah but yeah you just go like you have to do it hard then you turn the you turn the thing do a little more turn it and then just keep going all the way down pull it up go down more <laughs> wow. it takes a long time <laughs> i did one amateur it took me took me about two days of just wow. non-stop like yeah. scraping basically you're just scraping yeah. you feel you feel your oh i would imagine it yeah i thought it was hard to paddle <laughs> i can't imagine doing this for two days straight yeah you do that and then you go to the next one hang it go to the next one the next one then you get ready for the winter scrape yeah 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 you wrap them up and put them in the freezer and then take them out in the winter soak them and and scrape going. away yeah. oh. you boil you have to boil the stuff for three hours what so you would kind of just put this in a massive like pot bo of boiling water? No, you, you boil the solution first and then you let it cool yeah. and go warm. And then you put this in and then you have to stir it around and and soften the hide up. Yep. Because this makes it soft. You can feel it here. This is soft stuff here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the rest of it's still hard? Yeah, this is kind of like more rough. Yeah, because I did it, um, the solution was, I didn't boil it for the three hours. This is my first hide that I did my first batch of hides that I did on my own. So it's a learning process for me. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one's kind of in the same boat. Like this one's a little bit more dry. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Then you take the holes. See this, some parts are thin. Yeah. But you take the holes and you sew the holes up. Okay. So that just, just it smokes evenly. And then yeah. you put a skirt on it. You have to sew a skirt on it like a cloth so that it doesn't touch the ground and that it smokes all evenly. Wow. Yeah, you put these on. Yeah, I was going to say, is this something scrape. that you did? Yeah, you do the winter scrape with this. You tie it on. Um, there's a big thing out there. And yeah. You tie it on. And that's what we scrape it with in the winter to make it all nice and even. This is just, this is the, let me see what side of it is. This is the, the flesh uh, hair side. Yep. And this is the the meat side. The meat side here. Wow. Yeah. That's my baby there. Yeah. That is awesome. Wow. Thank you so much for uh, for unwrapping that for us. See, this is factory tan here. This stuff here. Yeah. And it doesn't smell. No, it doesn't. It smells like almost like leather, like just like regular yeah. leather. Yeah. It's all factory tan. All. So what does that mean? Tan. Like, does what? It's just a. It's not a cheaper quality hide, it's just that it's done on, on a the commercial factory. basis. Yeah, like on, on a commercial a... basis, the smell's all gone out and it goes through a lot of process, probably chemicals too. Yeah. But this is, uh, I believe this is caribou, smell that. Oh, like you can really, you can you really can smell, smell the difference. Yeah, and that's hand-tied, hand-tanned. 
You can almost, it almost like smells like smoky, kind yeah. of. See, and that's when you smoke it? You yeah. See, they smoked it to a stick. Oh. Like a, just a really light stuff on one side? Yeah. And a darker. Oh, on so on, on either side, it would have originally looked like this? Yeah. And then the smoking process makes it turn into that? Yeah. And you can have it smoke darker or lighter? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, so and you did it, this? This is your work? Is it, no, Kim gave me this piece here. These hides here. She told me to make my own gloves, so she gave me hide for gloves. Wow. So this one here is a lighter yeah. smoke, yeah. And the darker. Wow, that's beautiful. So it makes it just like that, like and Yeah, it's also probably a much more rewarding as like- It is. Yeah, yeah. as like the maker of it. Yeah. You're going from like killing the moose to like harvesting it to tanning it, or to, like, or to like curing it, or that process, and then, wow, that's pretty impressive. So I really like it. Like it's, it's a rewarding. It's hard work, but it's really yeah. rewarding at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. We definitely made the most of our time in Moose Factory. Not knowing very much about the history here, we had lots of opportunity to learn. We got to explore the second oldest Hudson's Bay staff house. And we even got to cut the lawn. We got to explore the island and we made some new friends along the way. In the end, it seemed like there was a reason that we ended the trip early and we both agreed that we were happy that it ended this way. As with all good trips, there always comes an end where it's time to say goodbye and make your way back home. We had a five hour train ride from Moosonee back to Cochrane where our car would be waiting for us. sat on the train filled with gratitude and memories that will last us a lifetime. The Catawagami was how we flowed to James Bay.